From Kashmir to Kanyakumari, India is a spellbinding mosaic of culture, tradition, languages and an extraordinary mingling civilization. Keeping its age-old culture maintained, today the country is taking huge strides on the path of development. Hello, I'm your host Uzma Jafri and today in our episode of My India, we bring you some of the stories that will give a glimpse of our country's diversity. Different cultures worship different deities for food and abundance. The Meiti tribe of Manipur worships goddess Imoinu to bless them with peace and prosperity through a ritual named as Imoinu Erapta. As the main offering to the goddess is a silver fish curry, authorities this year organized a fish festival to add on the festivities and serve as a one-stop shop for locals to buy all the offerings for goddess Imoinu. Take a look. A popular saying goes, the greatness of a culture is found in its festivals. As India is a land of fairs and festivals, it is quite common for people to capture Indian traditions and cultures at different festivals. Of a plethora of festivals celebrated by different tribes in the Manipur state, the Imoinu festival holds a special mention. Recently, the people of the Methi community in Imphal city of Manipur celebrated the festival where the mother goddess of peace and prosperity, Imoinu, was worshipped. Imoinu Iratpa is associated with the goddess of wealth and prosperity. So for the Methi, uh, worshipping this deity means uh, you are likely to have good harvest in this year, agricultural year and you are likely to accumulate wealth well in the terms of agricultural products, cattle and all that. For the festival, a ritual called the Imoinu Erapta is performed at home and public places. People light candles to welcome the goddess and offer fruits, fish and fresh harvest to the deity and pray to the goddess for happiness and abundance. The main dish of the festival is a well-prepared meal with a white fish curry being main offering to the deity. Marking the celebrations, musical and dance performances were also organized in the evening which was enjoyed by the locals. We have seen two ways of worshipping. One is inside the household. There is a particular place we call is Punga where uh, we make fair. And another is in certain places like in Kobru, uh, there is a shrine of the goddess and the Chengai Singh also there is. And in every uh, 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 royal palace of the mighty kings also there is particular place kept for this goddess. The significance of observing this particular day is uh, worshipping the Imoino goddess for getting us abundance of wealth and also this is one of the goddess of my days which gives ethical quotes uh, that a human being follow in their daily life so it is about to get energy life force energy and abundance of wealth as the white fish is the main ingredient that is offered to the deity on this festival, the fisheries department organized an Imoinu fish festival at Hapta Kangjebung in Imphal East. A total of 90 stalls were set up by different departments as well as private firms free of cost. In a way, the festival is a one-stop center for public to easily buy all items required for Imoinu Irapta as vegetables and other offerings were also present at the fair. The prices of the fishes were set by the fisheries department and therefore the fair was thronged by a large number of locals. The speciality of this particular uh, festival or ritual is that on this day we offer uh, white or silverly color fish to the goddess uh, Imuinu and we also believe that by offering the, the fresh fish, fresh vegetables and other eatable uh, fruits like and uh, will bring prosperity and progress. Altogether we have 90 stores uh, open this time during this festival and out of this uh, 60 has been earmarked for the fishery stores. 
History goes that worshipping goddess Emoinu began in the 5th century when only the royals of the Métis community were allowed to worship the goddess. Later in the 15th century, commoners also started worshipping the deity. The festival is celebrated by different names in different parts of the state. Moving on. In the multicultural society of India, mass marriages are setting in vogue these days. Recently, 300 couples belonging to Hindu and Muslim communities in the Aligarh district of Uttar Pradesh tied the nuptial knot during a mass wedding ceremony organized by the state government. In addition to being financially advantageous, these unions serve as a wonderful illustration of the nation's prevailing fraternity and unity. In the state of Uttar Pradesh, around 300 couples belonging to Hindu and Muslim communities exchanged wedding vows in the presence of their relatives and friends. The ceremonies were conducted by priests and religious leaders in accordance with their respective religions. In addition to fostering a sense of social harmony between the two communities, these celebrations allow the members of society to lavishly celebrate their nuptials without any financial burden. Mass marriages are getting immense popularity these days. This is a very good news that in एक ही परिसर में एक तरफ काजी निकाह पढ़ा रहा है मुस्लिम जो मत के मतावलंबी हैं उनकी शादी के रूप में और दूसरी तरफ भावरें पढ़ रही हैं जो हिंदू मत को मानने वाले लोग हैं तो ये एक प्रकार का संदेश भी है कि हम लोगों को इसी समाज में रहना है तो मिलजुल के रहना है सरकारें सब के लिए समान रूप से कार्य करती हैं तो सरकार की ओर से जो आयोजन है उसमें कोई भेदभाव नहीं है उसमें हिंदू भी हैं उसमें मुस्लिम्स भी हैं उसमें अन्य मजहब के मानने वाले लोग भी हैं और सब के लिए उनके मजहब के अनुसार उनकी मान्यताओं के अनुसार विवाह की व्यवस्था की गई है और सब के लिए जो भी व्यवस्था है वो सबको समान रूप से की जाएगी an initiative undertaken by the state government is garnering praise among different communities in Uttar Pradesh. The state government has also increased the funds spent on these ceremonies. This year, each bride received rupees 35,000 along with household stuff like kitchen utensils, clothes, and more. <laughs> जो भी हो रहा है खैर सही हो रहा है सरकार की तरफ से जो यहाँ पर सुविधा दी गई है गरीबों के लिए जो गरीब माँ बाप अपने बच्चों के लिए अपनी बच्चियों के लिए काफ़ी उनके अरमान होते हैं शादी करने के लेकिन काफ़ी सालों तक वो पैसा भी जमा करते हैं लेकिन गरीब इंसान मजदूर इंसान नहीं कर पाता है वो लेकिन ये सरकार की तरफ से जो है काफ़ी सुविधा दी जाती है और हमारे हिंदू भाई भी हैं हिंदू बहने भी हैं उनकी भी शादी और मुस्लिम जो है Blending in with the new culture of mass marriages in the country, many couples from impoverished sections and different communities are coming up to participate in the event, making their wedding celebrations a grand affair. The successful event represented the conglomeration of a wide range of Indian cultures and communities displaying unity and oneness present among the people of India. Now, a roundup of some of the major stories that made news recently. Devotees in different parts of India throng temples to offer prayers and seek blessings on the first day of the new year. The famous Siddhi Vinayak temple, situated in western Mumbai city, received a huge number of devotees early in the day who prayed to Hindu elephant god Ganesha for well-being and happiness of their families. Meanwhile, braving the winter chill, devotees also took holy dips in the river Ganga in northern Haridwar city to mark the occasion. So, we have to take a look at the Ganga in the first time, so that the Ganga in the first time is going to be happy for the country and the country. We have to take a look at the Ganga in the first time, and we have to take a look at the Ganga in the first time. Similar scenes were witnessed at eastern Puri town, where Jagannath temple, dedicated to Lord Jagannath, a form of Hindu god Vishnu saw devotees turning up from different parts of the country. People in India believe that the blessings of God should be sought before beginning anything new, more so on the first day of the year.
monks and devotees thronged India's eastern Buddhist holy city of Bodh Gaya to pray for the long life of the exiled Tibetan spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama. The three-day program saw the 87-year-old Nobel Peace Prize winning monk blessing other monks and devotees alike after he delivered sermons in the city where Buddha is said to have attained spiritual enlightenment under a tree 2,500 years ago. The Dalai Lama for the long life. Um, it's been a very special and unique experience being here with everyone um, coming from around the world and being able to share in this prayer and in this celebration um, and being in his presence is something that words cannot describe. Um, I hope to take this with me and share this with people back home. Media report said while addressing his followers, the Dalai Lama said that the Chinese government has been destroying Buddhist temples despite China having a large Tibetan community and thus attempting to eradicate Buddhism from the country. India hosts a large community of Tibetans including the exiled leader the Dalai Lama, one of the main sources of friction with neighboring China which accuses the Nobel laureate of stirring unrest. People across India marked the New Year celebrations last week with dance and music as the clock struck midnight. A huge crowd gathered in India's western Panaji city to dance to Bollywood songs and enjoy performances after two years of muted celebrations due to the coronavirus pandemic. हम कोरोना के वजह से सारा सेलिब्रेशन डैम्प था लेकिन इस साल वी आर जस्ट रॉकिंग एंड वी आर एंजॉयिंग एंड सेलिब्रेटिंग पीपल इन इंडियाज वेस्टर्न मुंबई सिटी लिट फायर क्रैकर्स टू मार्क द स्पेशल ओकेजन मीनवाइल सिक्योरिटी वाज हाइटेंड टू प्रिवेंट एनी अनटवर्ड इंसिडेंट एट वेरियस लोकेशंस Sufism has entrenched itself at the center of cultural and spiritual life in India. The Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir serves as the richest reservoir of this tradition and this can be well witnessed during the Urs of Sufi saints, when people cutting across religious lines gather under one roof. So, giving a glimpse of this unique devotional culture, today we take you to the 44th Urs commemoration of Mia Mahmood Nakash Bandi, which was recently commemorated in the Rajori district of Jammu and Kashmir. The shrine of Sufi saint Mia Mahmood Naqsh Bandi, located in Kas village of the Rajori district, is an abode of peace and tranquility. People cutting across all religious barriers gathered at the shrine to attend the 44th Urs of the Holy Saint. They offered special prayers at the shrine and wished for peace and prosperity to prevail across the nation. इस इलाके और बस्ती के लोग बड़ी शान और शौकत के साथ करते हैं जिसमें बिला लिहाज मजहब मिलत हिंदू मुस्लिम सब लोग यहां पर शरीक होकर हजरत किबला मियां महमूद रहमतुल्लाह तआला अली के उर्स में मुल्क की अमन और भाईचारे के लिए और मुल्क की तामीर और तरक्की के लिए यहां पर दुआएं होती हैं और आपसी भाईचारे के लिए यहां पर दुआएं होती हैं as part of celebrations, Sufi scholars and imams summoned the public on the life, religious services, teachings and spiritual strength of the saint who devoted himself in service of the public good. Forming an integral part of the public ethos for the last several centuries, even today the Sufi traditions play an important role in the lives of the people and connote them with an understanding of the world in all spiritual dimensions. Community kitchen or langar was also set up at the outdoors to serve meals as holy sacrament to the devotees coming from different regions. Mia Mahmud Nakshbandi Rahmatullahi Taala leke wale se ye yarz karunga ke is asman ke niche hazaron lakhon aur bu kharbu ke tadad mein log jitte hain zindagi basar karte hain. Lekin jo Mia Mahmud Rahmatullahi Taala le aur ya inki jamaat ke jitne log hain yani jinam oliya ikram ke naam se yad karte hain jinka tazkara jab jab kalamullah Sharif mein hai hadis se tajba mein inka jina baaki logon se lag thalag hota hai. ये अल्लाह के रज़ा के लिए जीते हैं इनका हर काम अल्लाह के रज़ा के लिए होता है ये अल्लाह के बंदों की खिदमत करते हैं मखलूक के खुदा की खिदमत करते हैं तो फिर अल्लाह तबारा का वाला 
लोगों के दिलों में इनकी मोहब्बत डाल देता है और ये बुजुर्गान दीन जो है इनका फिर मरने के बाद नाम भी जिंदा रहता है Communal harmony is a required facet for maintaining peace and tranquility in the multicultural and diverse society like India. The Urs commemoration of the Sufi saint and the number of devotees coming to the shrine clearly indicates that the lesson of humanity and compassion towards all religious communities is still having its roots deeply embedded in the culture and traditions of India. And now we bring you a few short stories about the recent developments and happenings from around the world in our section of World in Focus. Dressed in Ukrainian colors under bright lights, 13-year-old circus acrobat Maria Kravchenko dazzles an audience in Hungary. It is a much different setting than her home in Dnipro, where she practiced in unheated shelters while a war raged around her. Kravchenko is performing at Budapest Capital Circus along with young acrobats from Kharkiv, Kyiv, Odessa and Donetsk as part of a Ukrainian youth circus festival to showcase their talent. The Ukrainian artists are between 6 and 17. They gave more than 30 performances alongside competitors from around the world. Peter Fikit is the circus's director. He said all regular programs were stopped for 2 days in January. and the keys to the circus were handed to the Ukrainians before the war the Yaskrava Arena Dnipro International Children's Circus Festival was held every year in Dnipro since it began in 2010 more than 1000 young artists have participated with the winners regularly advancing to international festivals for Kravchenko she is focusing on her art in relative peace while she can The Fukushima town of Japan has become a fruit hub and a wide variety of fruits are produced in the city especially from the early spring season to winters farmers cultivate fruits like grapes peaches and pears with passion and skills this attracts visitors and tourists to Fukushima city Toka no kudamono toshite wa desu ne mazu sakuranbo kara hajimarimashite えそしてえ夏場の最大の品,あの品目であります桃そしてえ梨ぶどうりんごそして冬場にはですねえ加工品であるあんぽ柿とほとんどですね季節を問わずですね果物が生産されているのが福島でございましてフルーツ王国福島でございます。日本のねぶどう業界のね救世主でもあるシャインマスカットですね今。皮ごと食べられると非常にあの若い人からですねあるいは高齢の方まで非常に好まれているこれもですね年々今増えておりますね It's been 11 years since an earthquake had hit the eastern part of Japan Fukushima town has recovered and has started attracting tourists and foreigners At a recent fashion show held in Hong Kong, attendees could not help but notice something alien about the new designs worn by models on the narrow catwalk. Masked in monochrome blue, with some in down jackets tied to translucent skirts, fashion models of the Fashion X AI collection strutted past rows crammed with wowed critics and fashion designers. Attendee Cynthia Say said it felt like she was witnessing the future of fashion. I think the the face covering is definitely alien like and exciting. I mean you think about what the future of fashion will be like and what type of material we will be wearing, how light it would be. I think um one special unique thing I noticed about this collection is it all seems to be quite light. The material seems to be quite light and that's quite exciting to see. Over 80 outfits designed by 14 different fashion designers from Fashion X AI were all done in part with the assistance of artificial intelligence software AIDA short for AI based interactive design assistant the software was developed by phd students and academics at the hong kong based AID lab according to AID lab ceo calvin wong the software was not created to replace fashion designers but to serve as a supporting tool 
AIDA, the world's first designer-led AI system for fashion, was officially launched with the Fashion X AI show on December 19 and is currently available to designers in Europe and Asia Pacific. Fukushima town in Japan has recovered after the 2011 earthquake that took place in East Japan. Authorities in Fukushima are doing continuous efforts to ensure that the safety measures are maintained in the city. This includes the continuous checking and disclosing of radiation levels in the city. Fukushima is the largest え、こちら、え、令和 Authorities in Fukushima Prefecture have set up monitoring posts in different cities and towns to detect radiation. This data is being collected and published also by the authorities. Earlier, importing Fukushima's food products was banned in around 55 countries, which has now been decreased to 12. Citizens and administration in Fukushima are doing continuous efforts that this number reduces down to zero. A little kindness often goes a long way. Pannu Behera, a man in a small village of Odisha, addressed the injury of a few peacocks years ago. Today, his legacy is being carried forward by his grandson and fellow villagers. The number of peacocks in the village has reached to 163. Let's take you to the peacock village of India. If you are looking for a quick getaway, far from the hustle and bustle of the city, the Peacock Valley is just the right spot for you. Situated around 30 kilometers away from Odisha's capital Bhubaneswar lies the small village of Naraj, which has earned the epaulé of being the Peacock Valley of Odisha. At a time when we often read about poaching, this village has set an example of how compassion for a fellow creature has put a small village on the tourism and wildlife map of the country. This is real exciting and New Year, Naya Saal, Peacock se start karne ke, um, karna is the best thing. And here are so peacock that I have not seen anywhere and they are so close. And they are friendly, they are eating, 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 so they are very good to see them. According to locals, in the year 1999, this area was stuck by a cyclone and a local named Panu Bahera found some peacocks in distress. He attended to them but did not cage the birds. Soon, more peacocks joined him and everybody started calling him the Peacock Man. After Behera's demise, his grandson is taking his legacy forward. The number of peacocks reached around 108 before the pandemic. Today, it stands over at 163. Although peacocks are the main attraction, it is not unusual for tourists to spot other small birds here to share the food. Lockdown से पहले लगभग 108 पिकॉक थे। अभी lockdown में जब लोग आने यहाँ पर आने ही रहते, तभी उनका disturb मत हुआ। पिकॉक disturb नहीं होकर अभी 163 से ज़्यादा हो गया पिकॉक। It presents a good opportunity for the government to consider the heritage site as an ecotourism spot. This will fulfill the dual motive of protecting the environment as well as respecting our national bird. That's all we have for you this week. Your comments and suggestions are important to us. Do give us your feedback at myindia at anin.com. I'm your host Uzma and it's goodbye from the entire production team. <laughs>